All right. Hey, hey, hey. All right, Kia, we all good. Hi. <laughs> Kai, I'm sorry. Kai. That's all right. Kai, that's one of my um friends' son's uh, names, and he had such a beautiful African graduation. His mother was killing me um for uh pictures, and I just found some of the pictures. So Kai oh, cool. is a beautiful and powerful name, so I can't mess it up. <laughs> mess it up but I shouldn't mess it up, right, Jarvis? Correct. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm I'm now I'm going on live on Facebook, and I'm going to populate it and share it on different places. And what you can do, it populates under um, the monster panel. So what you can do, pick up the link from there, and you can share it on your various uh, on your page or your platforms. Good, good deal. All right, and your volume is coming in. Kai, how's your volume? You can hear us. I hear you guys. Yep. I have my earplug in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't. You know what? I have a you know a little small closet office, and so it almost comes off like a recording studio. <laughs> yeah. All right. I don't have. I don't have. You know, I don't have to do a, a what you call it. Um. I don't have to um, uh, put my headphones. In. All right. We do have a delay when we go to. Uh, Facebook you know, and various other ones. All right. Okay, how do you cast it on the Facebook again? Um, I'm going to share it in... Hmm. It gives me... Um, okay, I'll, I'll give you the link. I'll give you the link. All right. Oh, Sheree is here. Let me bring her in. Jarvis, I'm going to send you the link on your Facebook. Okay. Um, and it's Sheree. All right. Um, Kai, let me get to you and send it to you. So everybody is good. Um, this is really a, a result of um, straight um, quarantine and the limitation of that. You know, um, let's see if Newton's in. He might be in as well. All right. Um, let me pull him in. You got two students. All right, Newton's here. He's here. All right, we're good to go. We got everybody on screen. How's everybody? Let me hear you, Newton. Hey, guys. What's up, man? All right. Hello. Sheree, Hello. let me hear your, your um, volume. Oh, you, um, I need to move up the volume? No, I just wanted to test it. Okay. Hi. <laughs> All right. Um, so mm -hmm. just, to int just to introduce y'all to um, the, the, um, the, the idea of what I'm doing here with the monster panel, is I just want to give us something to do to occupy our minds. Too many of us are creatives and we don't get a chance to engage when we're not at these conventions and seeing each other. So this is really just an opportunity to do that and talk about different subjects in the process, right? So, um, and it, it was mentioned um, by a lot of different groups that are doing um, different, um, org different organizations, different platforms. So this is not nothing special to the monster panel. All right. Um, and I really wanted to talk about this. Actually, I was supposed to be in Tampa this weekend at a black authors convention, and we were supposed to be on a panel talking about black sci-fi. So I was like all excited. And as much as I engage with people on Facebook, it's usually just one on one and, you know, it's a debate. You know, it's not really exploratory. So um, pretend we're at a convention, okay? The same way you would be at a convention on a panel is the same way I would like you to be on this panel. Um, the way I do it is uh, I ask a question, and I'm a moderator panelist myself. So sometimes I have something to say. Most of the time, it's always I have something to say. I'll ask a question, <laughs> and then I'll announce the order, and then everybody will answer it. And then before I ask the next question, I will give you an opportunity to review or question somebody else, right? So for the first question, um, I know you sent me your bio, but I want to give everybody a chance to kind of condense and um, put emphasis on something special that they want to put emphasis on. So I'm going to allow everybody to introduce themselves. I'll go Kai, Jarvis, Newton, and Sheree. Um, and in the process, you so I let everybody introduce themselves, and then we're going to start uh, coming up with our definition of what black sci-fi is. So, Kai, 
So, uh, Kai, take it away. Introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. I am Arthur Kai Leakes. I am a you know, hybrid author um, of speculative fiction, fantasy. Mainly, I focus in fantasy and urban um, fiction and paranormal and para-romance. I also branch off into fantasy. So a lot of my stuff is hybrid, fantasy, action, horror, um, romance, black love. Um, I'm from St. Louis and I have multiple books out. You can find me at um, kyleeks.com and you can see my whole book list there. All right. And Jarvis, tell us who you are. Hello, everyone. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Jarvis Sheffield. I'm the department head for the Media Center at Tennessee State University. I also was privy to create Black Science Fiction Society 12 years ago. As of last month, Black Science Fiction Society is 12 years old. Um, we've also been able to make Genesis Magazine and Genesis Anthology series. Very good. All right, um, new. Hey guys, what's up? Can you guys hear me? I'm using this uh, new mic and trying it out. So it sounds good here. Okay, great. So my name is Newton Lillevoix. I'm the creator of Crescent City Monsters Supernatural Horror Series uh, comic book. There you go. <laughs> issue two, we're up to issue three. Um, so I, I won't write the, uh, the Crescent City Monsters comic book series. Like I said, it's a supernatural horror comic book that uh, focuses on more of the Afrocentric side of uh, the supernatural lore. So um, I've been working on that for the past three years with an amazing artist named Jean Carlo Bernal, who hails from the Philippines. I'm also currently working on a, uh, I guess you could say, um, teenaged uh, version of an uh, um, uh, action sci-fi venture called Galaxy Cadets. That's going to be um, Afrocentric, so um, that's a, a project that I'm excited about. Kind of hoping to share with the world soon. All right, very good. And I have the Crescent City Monsters, so I'm looking forward to the the next uh, installment and in future projects. So yeah, thank you. Got my vote on that one. Um, <laughs> and Sheree, uh, I kind of it's a big introduction, so go knock it out. <laughs> Is, um, Shuri, I've been knowing myself all my life. <laughs> um, this is Shuri Thomas. I am a writer and an editor. I edited um, an anthology called uh, Century of Speculative Fiction from the African Diaspora 20 years ago. So it'll be 20 years in July of this year. It was the first collection um, that introduced Black science fiction writers in one place, uh, particularly for fiction writers, and it included um, People like W. E. B. Du Bois, who before that book literally had not been discussed as a science fiction writer, and we've since found three short stories. Or he, he, I knew of two at the time. Published one, The Comet and Dark Matter, and published the um, the other one, Jesus Christ in Texas, in Dark Matter Reading the World, which is the second Dark Matter collection that came out in 2004, and they have since found uh, Prince of Steel. Um, and maybe one, I mean, it might be one more other story I'm forgetting, but they have found the whole archive with the science fiction. So, but it included people like Octavia Butler and Stephen Barnes and Walter Mosley and Tanana Ritu and just amazing, amazing writers, uh, Nala Hopkinson and new writers who are not new anymore. They are um, the top of the, the field. Linda Addison, um, E.B. E Zaboy, just a great, great number of people. Um, Andrea Hairston. Um, so I'm very proud of that. Um, it doesn't feel like 20 years, it feels like 100 <laughs> in some ways. And in some ways, it feels like yesterday. So, um, but we're going to talk about that. Um, well, I'm excited. I have a new book, mm -hmm. Nine Bar Blues, which is my first all fiction short story collection. Yeah. All right. Um, and I'm Jeff Carroll. I'm a science fiction writer, filmmaker, and um, comic book creator. and you name it, kind of anything, just crazy to my family. So that's the best way that that's the best way I describe myself. I am, I'm um, crazy to my family and full of ideas. Um, I was into science fiction since a child, and it was something that I accepted as a um, 
a genre of its own. And it wasn't until um, the 2000s, even though I had read other black speculative fiction stories, I never knew that there was a variety of perspectives on science fiction. You know, I kind of accepted, you know, Blackula, Blackenstein as black horror, but even with that, it was almost really limited to black people's presence in it, as opposed to something having its own perspective. So um, without um, dominating, I just wanted to set up the question like that, um, because this first question, how do you define black science fiction is something that I'm thinking is so fundamental, but yet on black comic creators, on black filmmakers, a real black filmmakers groups, um, and then at various conventions, you see so many people with so many different perspectives. I've met black creators that say they don't write black sci-fi. And I'm trying to figure out in my definition of black sci-fi, how do you do that as a black creator? Now, I have stories with white people, Latino people, Asian people, male, female, but to me, that's still all black sci-fi because it's coming from my head. So um, I'll say, let's let's go in reverse order. I know you just spoke, Sheree, so you, uh, you can take a stab at it again, then we'll go to Newton, and then we'll go to Jarvis, and, and Kai, you can close it out. How's that work? So what's the question again? What are you asking? How, do you, how can how you do be you a black, black creator sci-fi? and not do black sci-fi? Is that no, what you're asking? Do you, no, how do you define black sci-fi? Um, black science fiction, me personally, not in like, not the, not the encyclopedia of science fiction definition, perhaps, if they even have one, um, is work that is particularly using the science fiction field, you take the science out of it, it wouldn't be a story, but also if you take the blackness, with however you define that out of it, it wouldn't exist. So I can see totally how people can write science fiction and not think of themselves as black science fiction writers because they don't see themselves as um, consciously drawing in our culture or our, or our social, historical, political, social, economic point of view, particularly in it. Um, that's, that's fine. And that's good, and I understand it because a lot of times this is a real estate game. So people, what they, what I hear that, I, what I hear is that it's almost like the literary versus genre conversation. What I hear is that you don't want to get painted with this brush that you feel is going to marginalize you even further. You want access to the whole rainbow. So you want to say that you're a literary writer, so it has the respect and uh, whatever that has. Had. Okay, I'm with you on that. <laughs> um, it has, <laughs> to that you know um and you get the, the, the right kind of eyeballs on your work and you get the right kind of reviews and etc cetera, etc cetera, the right placement in bookstores and etc cetera, etc cetera. you don't want to be their genre even though a lot of these people write straight up science fiction right almost all of the black writers that you can think of right now who are getting any type of play at all are writing speculative fiction let's let us not put our steps. so um but I remember, as you all remember, when you couldn't catch some of them, <laughs> you know, even acknowledging the drama at all, at least not publicly, you know. So not everybody has their Superman cape on when they're all, you know, doing the <laughs> But um, so, yes, I have some feelings on that. But it is what it is. Because at the end of the day, as writers and creators, we just want to be read, right? We just want our work to have an impact in this world, however way you enter the space. Um, for me, as a science fiction writer, and also working closely with the Black Speculative Arts Movement, um, it, I've seen a change over the 20 years. I've seen a change um, from what we were doing with the Afrofuturism.net list served by Alondra Nelson and some of the other greats created and helped um, move forward. You know, we're moving onward and building upon the term that Mark Gary coined Afrofuturism and the work that Alondra Nelson and um, all these other great people put into it. And, but now it's not just an academic exercise. It is more conscious of a grassroots approach. It is more pragmatic in its way 
of thinking and to be pragmatic in futurism. We're talking about how do I use this beautiful lens or this tool, this this conversation to impact problems that we have today in the present sense. So it's not just amazing, great architectural. What if you get this kind of you know cool futuristic looking building? In the hood, it's about we need clean water and lead free housing and um, we're not always red line to the places where the defense depot poisoned the land and everybody knows that community is you know it's places where we don't have food deserts you know what i mean and where when we move there all of the businesses don't other the other businesses immediately and the city's picking up the trash in the in the devil's widow you know, on the streets. You understand what I'm saying? And the mall start looking like um, old Beirut back in the day. I mean, just let's, that's to me what Afrofuturism is today or Black Spell first movement. So Black science fiction is work that is consciously writing about the characters that don't usually get a voice. They're in the background. They're the person sitting on the subway in the scene. Um, they're not usually the main character of the story. A lot of um, our science fiction is very middle class in its aspirations, um, but maybe black science fiction is looking at other parts of our community as well. Um, so it's okay. when you're you're not afraid to be black in the writing, and not only just as a cosmetic, you know, wardrobe choice, you know, but they have a particular set of experiences that they're responding to in the plot of your story. You know, okay. that's for me, black science fiction. Is. I'm I'm definitely going to come back to you because I'm def I have some um, questions and comments on some of the things that you said. Um, I'm kind of thinking that after Newton makes his comment, I probably won't have anything else to say to you because you, between you two, you probably have answered everything. But um, Newton, respond to her or give us your own uh, definition if it is different to it um, of, of what is black sci-fi. Um, so I share some of Sherry's sentiments, um, but you, you would think that that the question would be easy to answer, right? What's black sci-fi? And but it's not. <laughs> it's, it's incredibly kind of uh, complicated. Like for example, um, that that statement you made before, where you have a, a writer who writes sci-fi but doesn't consider that they write black sci-fi. Um, back in the day, I would have thought that was some kind of sellout statement, right? <laughs> right? Like they're trying to disavow their blackness or separate themselves from that. But it's possible. I mean, you can be, you can be writing science fiction and be a black author. And if what you're not addressing is not Afrocentric or dealing with uh, um, black people in general, it, it's, it won't be black sci-fi, right? So I, I, can see, I can see that in the point where as a, as a writer, especially a black writer, if you write sci-fi, you know, automatically, it's not automatically black sci-fi, right? It's it's the content that you're producing that makes it black sci-fi, not you in general, right? Um, with that said, um, one of the things I found is when I was working on my story, Galaxy Cadets, um, I started using the, fir uh, the phrase Afrofuturism. Now, it's, it's something I've heard before, but I never really researched it. Um, you know, to be to be honest, you know, I was throwing it around in a way that it was uh, my perception of what Afrofuturism is, right? To me, Afrofuturism was just any sci-fi story that incorporated um, uh, any African culture in it, right? Um, but then as, as I was uh, doing more research into it, I found out that there was so many different perspectives on what Afrofuturism is, and it, it a lot broader than even what I um, define as personally as I define as Afrofuturism, and really academic and sometimes even abstract. That it, it it's really broad, and in some ways, um, sometimes I don't even use Afrofuturism as a term to describe my story. I'll just say black sci-fi because it just seems a it's little easy. bit more. Yeah, it's easier, and um, Afrofuturism seems, I guess, because you know, I guess people who started or, or who who began the the Afrofuturism uh, term or um, culture, they're protective of it. So, um, right, they don't want anybody just coming in and start saying, "Hey, this is Afrofuturism." So, um, so even as a black person, I'm careful 
<laughs> when I use for Afrofuturism. I'm like, you know, I, you know, I'm not trying to get political in anything. So, you know, I, I would prefer to use black sci-fi because that seems less, you know, this seems less baggage with that, right? Because, <laughs> you know, who, who's going to argue that, um, that I'm not black and I'm not writing sci-fi, right? <laughs> you know, um, so, so, you know, I'll stick with that. Um, but that said, you know, I, I, I like to keep things simple. I don't really like to keep it too abstract or too academic. Um, so f personally for me, um, black sci-fi, like I said, is anything that involves science fiction and um, African culture. <laughs> you okay. know, that's it for me. I, I, I feel some re revolutionary heat in there. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I'm, I'm going to go last and I'll probably take the risk and turn it up, turn up the heat. But um, Jarvis... Um, let's see what you got. Um, oh, you know, man, I keep, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the kiss. I keep things, uh, keep it super simple. Uh, okay. For me, black science fiction is uh, creative work that centers around uh, science and uh, with the protagonist or the main protagonist uh, being black or African. So that's, that's kind of my perspective of it. Say, for example, some people wouldn't consider I Am Legend uh, black sci-fi. Some would. That could have easily been, in most of Will Smith's movies, easily been a white person, but it actually had a black protagonist. So I consider it um, black sci-fi, similarly with I, Robot. Um, and in terms of um, some writers writing for a mainstream and some some writers writing for a particular audience. I think that's um, on each creator where it's room for everybody to write what they want to write. Um, and I think it's important to know your market and focus on your market. If your market is uh, mainstream, hey, do your thing and shoot for mainstream. Um, if your market is primarily black like mine, uh, do that. Some people it's like, oh, you need to take the name out of Black Science Fiction Society and just call it Black, just call it the Science Fiction Society. So that came up 12 years ago when we first started the thing. And I was like, look, this, I didn't start this to like get rich off of or anything. I started it because it needed to be done. We have a lot, a plethora of uh, creations, comic books, books, movies, and things of that nature. But at the time, it was hard to find it. So I created this uh, resource <laughs> to pull all those resources together to make it easy for people to find. So I found my market, which happened to be the black market. And I, I don't look down on anybody else that um, decides to shoot for uh, the mainstream. But my audience, uh, the black audience, has like kind of been sitting in the in the back seat getting driven around and for too long i think and so i focus on that market all right um you gave like the easiest answer bro um i totally <laughs> I, I told you I keep I it forgot, simple, man. right i forgot you were in the black science fiction society <laughs> and you probably had to deal with this um question a lot more frequently you know it is your benchmark question per se um all right, Kai, um, you, I, I, I was looking for somebody female to be on the panel, um, and I didn't even think of you as a female because we converse so much <laughs> that I like, I, I like what you say. Um, I'm, 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 I'm saying this in a way that when we talk about black sci-fi, there's few people that um mentioned la banks right and um i love octavia butler and stephen barnes is my man right but who brought me into it with uh, regardless of gender because i didn't really see that right i just saw the energy of what her stories was representing and i didn't think about her as a female or male writer you know if you feel me on that and when when we interact, when we when I first friended you on Facebook, or you friended me, however we had started it, that's the energy that I got, and we actually bonded over over LA Banks and a discussion about uh, black sci-fi and her contributions to it. And I was like, man, this lady is overlooked, you know. Um, and so that's how I think. Whenever I see you, I say, oh, that's my LA Banks sister. 
you know, my LA Banks partner, we in it, and she's got a bunch of disciples, but I think of you that way. So um, that's why I have you, you know, I tag you in things to bring you in conversations. Um, and if I put a smiley face, I'm really smiling when you make a comment, because I fully agree with you. I so, appreciate it. Yeah, I'm interested in hearing your answer. And, um, and then, like I said, I'm going to give my answer. Well, basically, I'm going to keep it simple, too. But see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you to the real people around the world. So okay. in my community, <laughs> up the street, we used to have a Barnes & Noble. When I was in college, we had our bookstore. What did I do? Because I loved books and was addicted to books, I looked straight to the genre that I needed to go to, which was fantasy. Sci-fi happened to be right next door to it. Did I pay attention to it? Mm, it just depends because as a black woman, I wanted somebody at the time that I started switching my lens and my reading um, was in college. And so I was ending my obsession. Well, I've never ended it, but I was narrowing my obsession of vampires because I was ending one lady's series. I won't name her because I'm going to keep it black. Uh, I was okay. in one lady. I was in there. Okay, I was. I grew up on Bram Stoker. I grew up on Anne Rice. Okay. But before that, I was R.L. Stein heavy because that was my introduction into horror. So when I was ending, when she was ending her series, I leapt into L.A. Banks. But I was suggested that, and so when I found him, my mom was like, "Whoa! Finally, somebody that sees me." represents me, showing me doing the things that I love. I love the heck out of fantasy. I love the heck out of vampires and all that, whatever. And so when I found her, that helped me hone my own thing because before I was just like reading books and mentally playing the mind game and switching the characters to make them look like me. So they would be like, oh, they're creamy skin. So my mind had to flip it <laughs> and make them black. And so, when I got into writing, I was like, basically, that was my going into writing. So when I went to Barnes and Nobles and whatnot, and I had to find these sections because they always segregate everything off of the sections with the genres, I fell into her world. And she was not in like black sci fi section of Barnes and Noble. She was just in the, you know, fantasy sci fi area and horror. And so that's how I found her. Um, it made it, in my opinion, Black sci-fi, labeling it black sci-fi, it helps it helps you find it easier, basically. Otherwise, it gets lost in the sea, and sometimes I feel that's on purpose in the mainstream. It gets lost in the sea of all the j different genres going on. So labeling it black sci-fi is just basically, in my opinion, for what I do, writing fantasy paranormal, and I have written sci-fi, um, it just narrows it down for me. It just means that a story perspective coming from the black community. And it may happen just to be sci-fi. That's just what it is for me. I, I actually agree with that definition. Um, I know it doesn't really conflict with anybody else's definition. Um, how, I, how I define it is really science fiction coming from the mind of a black person. Um, that's, that's very simple. And to me, it's not a choice. I know, like you said, Newton, they are very guarded with Afrofuturism. And to me, I feel some yeah. people can be very <laughs> guarded with Black Sci-Fi. I remember when I came in to Black Sci-Fi, people were writing about uh, Black warriors in Africa with no science in it. And I used to say, but that's not Sci-Fi either. You know, that's, you know, Black warrior stories, you know, and um I do look at science fiction as a futuristic scenario engineering conversation where you play out scenario and try to find a human reaction to them. I'm all, all with that. But to me, um, black sci-fi or black writers and any, just like any ethnic writer, any writer from any culture, you don't have to try to be what you are. So I don't try to be a to be black. I don't tr I now I may try to include some elements of history in there, but my characters are going to behave and react 
based on how I think they're going to behave and react. And my story is going to be confronted by something that I feel is a um, a challenge, an obstacle, a, a, a question, and they're going to solve it the way I think I design it. So for me, all of that is what makes it black. It's not about me calling them Hotep or me calling them Jaquisha. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> a, white person, a white person can name their characters Jerome and Leroy and make it black. You know what I'm saying? And if I and if I name my character um Fawn, Paige, or Becky, or Noah, you know what I'm saying? Names that may not be quote unquote stereotypical black names, it doesn't mean that now I'm not writing a black science fiction story. What makes it black is me thinking it's a story. Me thinking of the solution, me thinking of the, the antagonist, the protagonist, the, the pacing of it, all of that is black because it comes from my mind. Now, I do feel what you're saying, Jarvis, with I Am Legend, and um, Independence Day or um, I, Robot, because I, I think Will Smith um, is more than just an actor. I think he says, this is not how my character would behave, and he contributes to the story, so thus making his character in a particular story that could be mainstream is uh, um, what makes it Black or bends it, multiculturalizes it. So that's kind of how I feel, Sheree. I don't feel it's something that um, people can decide, oh, I'm going to write a black sci-fi story. You can write it more black if you want to, <laughs> if there's a way to do that. Um, but your, your thoughts are black, regardless of what you want them to be. I can think like a person that's not black, but it's still a man thinking like a white person or an Asian person or a feminine, a female person, you understand? But at the end of the day, I'm a black man. So if I write a female lead, like I have in my story, um, Welcome to Boss Ladies Planet, it's still a black male sci-fi book. Trust me though. Yes. Hey, it's a now, difference. I feel like there's a difference though. You do still need to kind of um, give some more nuance to it because I can be Becky Lee, blonde hair, whatever, and be like, today I want to write a black person. Right. And so they can do like you just said, but it still can be, it end up being like you were saying, Jarvis, that um, Will Smith's story, basically it was just Will, it still could have been a white story. The difference with black sci-fi to me is that depending on who the writer is as a black person, you got to inject culture, our culture, our spirit, our sauce into the story to really let you know that this is a black story. And I'm not just saying street lit or whatever. It is the flow. I mean, yeah, if you're I, just I, writing a basic story and the person you happen to just say, she, Becky, is actually black and that's all you doing and touching on it, I yeah, don't I, really feel like that's a whole Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. All right, oh, let me give Jarvis look. and then Cherie. Okay, okay Jarvis and Cherie. Did you call me out? Oh. I'm like, I don't get this fuck. Jeff? Okay, go, go, go for it. No, it doesn't matter. It's just Safer. about the body writing something, then there's no need to give it a definition at all because you're just writing science fiction. There's no point of saying black if it's just whoever black is writing it makes it, it what's what makes it different it could be it's just science fiction at that point there's no point in even identifying as black science fiction if it's just the person who happens to write it is occupying this social <laughs> identity that we call that black okay so if you were going to take the point of taking it beyond just a physical person walking down main street or whatever street and I happen to be in this black body and I'm writing these characters, however name I give them, and it's just science fiction, then just say it's science fiction. But if you're going to make a point of calling it black, then you're saying something else. Now, and that's why I said it could be real estate where the reason why you didn't see um, one, and, and it all depends on who the booksellers are in the stores. So one group of booksellers might have been told to place um, LA Bank's book 
in the general science fiction so anybody can find it. Others might feel like I want my people to find it or I want black writers, black readers to find it. So I'm going to make a black science fiction section because there, there were no black science fiction sections 20 years ago. They were still having a conversation. Did we even read or write science fiction? That's why it's literally essays in dark matter about that. They didn't think we we were in the genre besides Octavia Butler and Sammy Delaney. So the reason why Octavia Butler couldn't even do her own version of dark matter is because she was told nobody wanted to read about race because the idea was that if you're gonna have black science fiction writers, one, they don't exist. Two, it's not enough of them to make a dime off of. Well, that's a conversation. Um, but three, all they're going to be able to talk about is race. I mean, so there's a whole lot of assumptions in that. So when you talk about black science fiction, it's not just, ooh, my name is Joe Blow and I'm writing science fiction. It's, it's, it's going to be more than that. And if it is more than that, then let's talk about it. And as Kai said, break down the nuances of it. Now, who does it and everything? I'm not passing out badges on who the black is of the black. We don't have a black of the black science fiction award. You know, you know <laughs> We should. So we should. We should. I have no problem with that. <laughs> you know, like you know, house. You know, we don't have that. Um, you each reader writer is gonna bring what they bring to it. But there it is something more than just I'm black and I'm writing science fiction. Like, like come on now. Otherwise, why are we doing this panel? We don't need to have this conversation. You know, I mean, I'll give I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example to that, but I'm gonna let Jarvis and Newton get on it before because I want to uh, uh, elaborate on what I was saying. Well, go ahead, Jarvis. Okay, I just had a quick question for using your definition of black science fiction. Say I'm a black creator and I make comic books or I make a movie and it doesn't have not one black person in it. Is that still black science fiction? Okay, since it's time <laughs> for me to give my answer, you can pause and let me respond. Because um, Jarvis asked me the question. So what I think black is, right? And why I say, yes, just because you black, it's a black story. Just because you're Asian or uh, uh, Chinese or Japanese and you grew up in that culture, um, that it is that is because, give you an example, what I think the white people in my story will do and react is based on my my thought that to me is what makes it black and i'm going to give you an example sheree because i know that's really crazy but i say it all the time we had armageddon right we had um uh, another one uh where the comet was coming to earth right in the Penn State, yeah, right so so in the writers i guess say western writers white writers, I'm not going to say mainstream because I don't see a mainstream globally. It's just white, black, everything else, right? And every other one. So we're just going to divide up sci-fi racially, right? They decided to eliminate the threat, send up a bomb, blow up the asteroid. When the Asian writers came around the same threat, they came up with the wandering earth. And they said, put jet engines on the earth and move the earth out the way. To me, that is in line with Asian martial arts. They deflect, they move things out the way. That's in line with Western thinking. They want to destroy what they feel is a threat to them. So what would be the black expression? Sure, African-Americans have uh, African roots, but also European oppression culture on top. So we're like a hybrid, but when you think about some of the things that we do in our stories, as I read more black sci-fi like you did, Kai, I start to see the behaviors that are unique to us. But until we had a volume of stories, you really didn't get a chance to see how we distinguish ourselves from others. So even if I'm reading Acacia from David Anthony Durham, who will never say he's a black sci-fi writer. I see a unique, I see a difference than uh, uh, our, um, George R. R. Martin. You know, I see a difference between his story and Game of Thrones. However, there's not that many, uh, well, there are now, but on the mainstream level, there's not that many uh, fantasy stories written by black people. But as we start to write more, or if you delve into the independent world, you will see that. I'm sorry, I hope that answered your question, 
Jarvis and Sheree, but Newton, you got the floor. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, so <laughs> um, I pretty much agree with a lot of the sentiment that, you know, Kai Jarvis and Sheree was saying um, about what uh, black sci-fi is. Um, so I, I, at first, uh, when you made your statement, Jeff, I was like, okay, you know, that seems kind of like too broad, you know, just because you're black, you're doing, um, uh, just because you're a black writer and you're writing sci-fi, you're, you're automatically black sci-fi because, um, I don't want to get into like who's the blackest, like Sheree kind of mentioned, but on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, there's there's that saying, right? Like just because uh, someone's a brother doesn't mean he's a brother, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, so so that that automatic thing kind of made me think of that. But um, when you explain the fact that um, you're talking about an author, even if maybe he doesn't have. Uh, any African cultural references or anything, but just his mindset, his perspective of the world in a black perspective, that I understand. Um, but um, without that, then I, I don't think it really, it would really matter. But the, the one thing I wanted to kind of do is uh, maybe play devil, devil advocate with you. Um, so let's say, <laughs> so let's say um, this uh, black, a black sci-fi story came out, right? And it was the dopest story you've ever read. But then you find out, no, but let's say it, you find out that it was written by a white guy, <laughs> right? Would you, would that change what you think about like the story? Would you say, you know, this, this is not black sci-fi? I would have to accept it what it is. I would have to say, yo, you actually wrote a story. You created a Luke Cage. You created a Black Panther that really connects with people. But it isn't Black sci-fi. It's a good story with a Black character um, in a Black setting, probably very stimulated. I mean, I write some good white characters that I'm pretty sure, you know, if I didn't have my name on it, people may say, oh, shoot. You know, I like it, you know, but I would say no. I actually, you know, if you were to go 50 years from now into the future, that's how um, historians would describe it. They would say that was a white writer. And let's look and compare him to the other one that wrote a story that a lot of black people embraced. OK, so then by your definition, I could never write sci fi, right? I could only black die. Uh, write black sci-fi so like i would never be able to write just sci-fi you know just regular sci-fi let's say i wrote sci-fi that just had aliens not even race any races right right it would just be black sci-fi um and i would never so i'd be like i, I don't want to so i'd be pigeonholed into this black sci-fi thing i can never write anything else besides black I, i'll say this to you newton i i'm i'm eliminating the mainstream because what you're doing is you're psychologically sectioning yourself into a small black compartment. But what I'm saying is let's throw away the mainstream and make everything. Because I love Kung Fu movies. I don't call them Asian movies. I don't even ask for diversity in them. But I love them all the same. So when I write a black sci-fi story like Street Lit um, Kai, I expect it to be embraced by everybody. I don't do what you do, Jarvis. I don't write just for black people. I write for people that like sci-fi. That's mm -hmm. it. It's a black it's a black writer, but I'm writing sci-fi. To me, even you know, so I don't if, if I'm gonna call it Western viewpoint, it's still sci-fi. I come from an African American viewpoint, whatever that is, whatever an Asian American viewpoint is, whatever a Japanese that didn't leave Japan's viewpoint is. It's all sci-fi. Well, then that, that kind of leads into another question, right? So yes. culturally, what, what is sci-fi, right? Or what culture does uh, sci-fi fall in if it falls in any culture, right? Is it mostly when is it mostly Western culture, right? When you say sci-fi, is it, are you and talking no. about a Western culture in general or are you talking about just uh, um, specific cultures? Okay, um, and I used to ask this question in the beginning, 
but I knew we were all long-winded. So we 44 minutes into the panel. And I only asked one question. What is life thought? I, I had two more questions. That was it. And I'm going to make those quick, and I know we could do it. But my first question used to be, how do you define sci-fi? And so I think um, Kai, she answered it in her answer in terms of a science fiction, um, a scientific uh, tool in the story, not just pick up a cell phone and talk on the cell phone, but to present a scientific. So to me, I look at science fiction as an engineer would look. Let's play out this particular uh, scenario. Like for me, my book, uh, Harlem Shake, it plays out the scenario of the 125th Street fault line becoming active, right? So to me, that's what I'm speculating about. So I'm coming up with my own hypothesis and I'm driving certain answers to that. So to me, you take alien invasion. Western culture, they demonize foreigners. So you have war of the world. African culture, if you read this book called Zorro, my favorite um, black sci-fi book, the aliens are African people because we have a culture that connected to the sun, moon, and stars. Asians, when you look at Godzilla, the Asian aliens are Asian. So I, and they're friendly or, and they have a variation. Some of them, like if you look at Mothra, some of the aliens were friendly, some of the aliens were a threat. But if you look at Western world, everything coming from outer space is Independence Day. Because to me, that's how that culture sees, you know, the Christopher Columbus thing, you know? So to me, that's, that's how it makes sense. Anybody else want to answer Newton's question? Um, or I'll just ask the other two questions that I have. All right, let, let, let me go on um, and blow up my box because I know y'all probably gonna come at this crazy person, Jeff Carroll. <laughs> But um, I'm going to go with the biggest breakthrough in, in sci-fi. And let's not all say Black Panther, um, even though I feel that was a really ginormous breakthrough. I think, Sheree, you even alluded to like before Black Panther, and now we're dealing with post-Black Panther. But um, what are, what for people that are not into sci-fi um, as much as we are, because we're actually creators um, um, of it, what is a big breakthrough in black sci-fi that you can say, yo, this change, this moved the needle? You know what I'm saying? In the in the last say, three or four years in black sci-fi, it can be video games, it can be board games, it can be movies, books, comics. Heck, it could be music. You know, you could say Janelle Monae, all right? <laughs> um, Pi, Jarvis, Newton, and then Sheree. We're going that order. Um, for me personally, it'll be attack a, attack the block that Ooh. moved the needle for me because I was just ecstatic <laughs> again. I was like, why didn't this come out when I was a kid? <laughs> but I understood why. So for me, it was that, and then I'll even Deep Space Nine. Mm. That would be my next one if I'm going to okay. go with sci-fi oriented, STEM oriented with touches of magic and all of that in there. Those two for me in my generation, and they, they're vast different lengths of time, but they still influenced me greatly. I would say those two were a great movement to the black culture in general. Okay. John, I, to all right. I have to agree with, uh, with to Kai. I agree you want to say something before you go down. Oh. Clarification. Are we talking about your original question was in the past three or four years. Is it three or four years or in our whole lives? What what we think are the most pivotal thing? Because Deep Space Nine, I love it. I know that was, but that's why I said it was fake. <laughs> okay. So we Even stand- Even the Rock was more than four years ago. Yeah, but, so I <laughs> but I, I'm, I mean, I'm giving liberties because okay. if, if you know, even though Attack the Block was years ago, I think its repercussions are bigger now than when the movie came out. You know, um, especially with John Boyega, when he got Star Wars, there were people that never even heard of Attack the Block. Attack the Block. So, um, I think you're correct in that. But you're right. I say very recent, but you know, make it. Make, convince me I'm wrong. Tell me. So Jarvis, go ahead. What's your answer? 
All right, I'm gonna have to say uh, give a special mention like Kai to uh, Deep Space Nine because you can't get better than Captain Black Jesus. So, you know, <laughs> we're trying to get back to that level. But um, more recently, I mean, and then I'm a little different from most people. I um, think, and, and you probably have never heard of this movie. It's called Return by Lamont Gant. And there's also uh, a novel that goes along with it. And that's moved the needle for me because that's the, someone took the money that a person would normally take like less than ten thousand dollars to make a, a short film he made a full-length film and it's good you can get it at walmart you can go get it on amazon and things of that nature so that that's kind of proof positive to me that this can be done and like i said it's it's um it moved the needle for me because it's, it's the black from start to finish it comes from our perspective is we're not no sidekicks we're not uh easy uh pickings for the monsters or whatever and it was it was well done so that moved the needle for me within the last few years okay and mind you guys after this question i only have one more question and um i'm gonna give a shout out to uh the sponsor for the show all right newton take it away yeah um so i guess i'd have to go because there's there are a lot of um not a lot, but there are a few um, things I can mention. Uh, D Space Nine, of course, one of them. Um, but for me, I guess I would have to go with um, The Matrix uh, mm. because it, it was one of those sci-fi movies that I thought included like black people, just in, a lot more black people than you typically see in sci-fi, um, especially um, it kind of made more sense that um, a lot of the people who were outside The Matrix were people of color. So, and, and that kind of made sense, right? Because <laughs> it's like who, and it's, it was kind of symbolic when I saw that and it hit me really strong um, when I, every time I think about it. So just based on that idea, I, I really um, thought like the matrix was, was something for me that, um, that, that hit home in terms of uh, sci-fi and, and black people. All right. Um, again, Sheree, we going with big breakthroughs. So what you got for us? Um, big breakthrough in the last three to four years will be yes. Fire Magazine for me. It's Fire, Fire Magazine. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, on, the, on the literary side, on the writing side, publishing side. Um, I think that's been um, very significant in giving people, um, young writers, black writers particularly, another venue where they know that other black writers and readers are going to be editing their work. Um, so they won't have to do as much translation of black culture and be concerned about writing work for white gays. Um, and it's also have, um, it's been nominated for the Hugo Awards and it's getting a lot more support or should be getting a lot more support um, for those writers. So I think that's very significant. I'll also say Milton Davis um, on the independent side um, has created a great many spaces um, like you, Jarvis, and like you, Jeff, um, as well, um, Maurice Waters, uh, 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 the brother out of um, the uh, Black Eastern Comics Con, uh, you know me, have been doing a lot of wonderful work to show, first of all, their journeys. Milton is very transparent about his move from being a um, Black entrepreneur and business person and working um, and as a chemist and, and, and doing that and moving on to his own self-published space and, create, and then publishing other people, um, becoming a publisher himself. So I think that's important. And he's used all the platforms I can think of to do that. Um, and that's really, that's made a difference uh, for, for people who are not necessarily even in, in his particular area of publishing but just to see what can be done and what's possible in the kinds of conversations. And then the third thing I would say past three or four years would be the Black Speculative Arts Movement that um, Renardo Anderson and John Jennings um, co-founded. And, um, and they have created something that's international now um, in terms of people taking the very first question you gave us, Jeff, what is Black science fiction and defining it for themselves in ways that make sense for where they are and who they are and what they need in their community. So it's like a, a global open access project, this thing. You know, it's not a, it's this or that. It's not very uh, prescriptive, 
in when we went to uh when we were in Birmingham, UK, uh they were on their own thing, they would do it, they you know, they were getting it started. It was getting it was going up over there, you know, in the to you know, in different ways than it is perhaps in Memphis and in St. Louis, what's happening in Canada, uh what um Clinton um has been doing over there, the artists he's dealing with more um Montreal and Toronto, you know. So it's just a lot of stuff that's happening and it's been exciting to see people navigating those spaces and asking these questions and you know creating different solutions for things um on their own terms. All right. God Lee, I'm I'm gonna second the amendment on all of the things that you all said. I, I thought I had room after Jarvis, but it kept piling on. I kept thinking, oh my God, what else am I gonna say? Um, I'll say like this. I'm not going to say um, Black Panther, right? I'm going to go with my other one that was around before Black Panther that crashed uh, Netflix, and that is Luke Cage. And um, for some of the same reasons why Jarvis said and used re Return, um, I think it was a rebranding of a character a lot more than the way they rebranded Black Panther because I think Black Panther was already revolutionary in the comic book. What they did with um, uh, Luke Cage was take the tiara off, take the bracelets off, take that yellow collared shirt off, take the chain belt, stop talking jive, and made it hip hop, made it like, that's what I want to write. You understand? You had KRS One in it, it had Rock Him. You know, um, I actually, I love Wakanda Khan, but I want a Luke Cage Khan, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Because I feel that we need to have all of those different elements in there. Um, I feel you on the epoch and I feel you on um, um, black sci-fi conventions, like all of them, Sheree. But I will say this. I actually like Will I Am attempt to come up with a comic book. I like DMC coming in there. I like um, with the, the, um, the Weekend. He had a comic book that only got one, one um, week her one issue out. It was supposed to be a full series, but he didn't finish it. So those are some of the things that I think are like really big breakthroughs um, in it. And I can go on, but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Luke Cage. So now I'm going to take 30 seconds. Um, I usually ask for a sponsor, but um, I took the space myself to sponsor it. And <laughs> I'm going to just announce my Kickstarter made money. All right. I listen to people like Newton and I made money back in the middle of this quarantine. So my book, Horror Streets, is out. Thank you, all the people that supported it. Um, and for anybody that wants to ever sponsor one of my panels, I do give you a shout out like this. So it's probably 30 seconds for me, but for other sponsors, I'll give like a full minute or two. If you have a commercial, I'll even play your video. Um, so that's it. So on the rebroadcast, you'll see the little banner that comes over of whoever the sponsor is. Now, next. The last question, and we're really tight, um, but you did good on that last question, panelists. Uh, the last question is kind of the, the most negative question, but we had we all admit that this genre is grown, right? We all admit that we're all learning, and we're learning actually from each other. Um, so in answering this question, think of it like that, kind of some of the solutions to overcome some of the obstacles um, and I'll, I'll go. I'll go first, right? So one of the big obstacles is black people, right? I write a story with black characters. Oh, I don't want to read it. Oh, you know, <laughs> and some people will be like, "I'll buy all your books." You know what I'm saying? And in the back of my mind, I'm like, "Why aren't? Why isn't everybody black just buying my stuff, whatever convention it is?" Um, so I think um, that is a big obstacle. Right, I have actually had black people say, "I don't want to. I don't read science fiction. That's you know religious or something." Where they'll come and they'll be very offended by it. So I think um, doing events and panels where we talk about it and more information and more books like what you put together, Shireen, um, I think that's the answer. You know, holding conventions and talking to people, being transparent, um, and not just writing. Like I could be writing right now. But I want to talk to people. And I thank everybody that's following Aurelis and Monique and other people that are on Facebook that I didn't see their names. 
So, um, Sheree, Newton, Jarvis, and Kia, you close it out. Um, what are some of the biggest obstacles, or not the biggest, but some of the obstacles in Black Sci Fi app? Sheree first. Mm, I wish I had more time, and we answered this question first and ended on the breakthrough. <laughs> I know, um, right? <laughs> And on the good note, live on the lift us up in the coronavirus era. <laughs> um, I think, okay, well, you know what? It might be a segue from our last question, last conversation. I think it's ironic that a lot of the projects that were mentioned were white created projects. Luke Cage. Uh, 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 we didn't talk about uh, the uh, Watchmen. That was the big thing before everything shut down. Everybody was all into the Watchmen. And they made it blackity blackity black with the Tulsa um, information in it. And Regina King is going going hard with it. But again, white created project. Um, even you know, we won't talk about what Alan actually thinks about it. Um, but you know, there is that. Um, everything you mentioned almost was all white created. So I just think it's ironic that we're not you know talking about and lifting up with all these independent creators here, black projects. So I guess there is some hope that I mean a lot of people or several people have things that have been green, green lit for projects that are going to be adapted um, television wise in terms of HBO, Nadia Okorafor has, is working on some wonderful projects. Um, I believe uh, Nora K. Uh, Jemison has um, possibly something that's happened that may come out, you know, things get option, we'll see. Um, John Jennings has been adapting things through his own imprint with Abram. Um, with the, you know, the, the, the challenge we have is the one that always, is the um the structure of the of the of the industry us having access and being able to distribute what we create to large numbers of people and so we need to connect more on how you know pull resources together on how to get your comic books or your novels um your film projects out to more eyeballs more people how do we do that when we, if we're not the ingrams if you're not the you know, distributors. If you're not the distributor, how do we do that? So I think that's probably one of the challenges. Creating this right. beautiful amazing stuff, how do we get it out? Okay. Newton, what's a big obstacle that you see? Uh, yeah, Sheree took my answer. <laughs> I was going to go with distribution. I mean, um, a lot of times you'll hear people complain about, like, uh, not just in black sci fi, but uh, in general. Like, oh, we're not included in the Academy Awards. We're not included in this. Um, to be honest, you know, I don't really care about stuff like that personally, like Academy Awards and stuff like that. Like, if they don't include us, that nah, nah, I don't care. That's, right. <laughs> you know, that, that's been going on for years, that asking, you know, a seat at a table, that's, that's not my thing. I'd rather build the table, you know. Um, but um, the one way you solve that, right, is by controlling and having distribution and also marketing to um, be able to market what you have in, in the way that you want to. Um, if you have those two things, then I think I think you'll be good. We, we wouldn't have to, you know, worry about not being able, not being nominated for an Eisner or an Academy Award or whatever, you know, you, you wouldn't care about that, right? Because um, uh, if you control distribution and marketing, it wouldn't matter, right? So that that's that's my short answer. <laughs> okay, and, and and um, just to let you know, I usually say keep your answers, you know, tight, you know. But I was so interested in all y'all answers, I didn't say that this topic. So please forgive me. Um, I and Sheree, I do you say, um, at the end, you know, give a shout out to yourself and tell people about your future projects. So we may do that in overtime. Um, so that's when, you know, you'll get a chance to shout yourself out. Um, and also when I rebroadcast this, all of the links to your project will be in the description so people know how to contact you. All right. Jarvis. Um, all right. I think, um, being grassroots, I had to, uh, learn the business of doing business, which is you learning and executing basic business practices and then also once the project is completed how to market it that's one of the biggest things how to market because nobody knows that you exist they can't support you or buy your products and so i think learning to do a business plan if just for a guide for yourself 
um, it helps with trying to get money and things of that nature, but just for yourself and update it, update that as needed. And your business plan should have, um, and this is stuff that I discovered on my own self, um, with the marketing plan, having a marketing schedule, having your marketing tools so that you can reach people most effectively. Because like I said, one of the biggest things is no one knows you exist, they can't buy from you. And um, I think knowing the other part is knowing your audience. And I think uh, this is completely a, a adjacent to sci-fi, but I look at Tyler Perry. He learned his market and he marketed to his uh, genre and has become a multimillionaire doing that. So even with a niche market, you can be yeah. successful, but you have to know your market and market yourself and, and continue to have more products for them. All right. Um, Kaya? How do you well, everybody more? touched on what I would have said, but I guess I'll think of something interesting. I'll add on to say um, in the Harlem, Harlem Renaissance period, creators had sponsors. We need more black sponsors. We need mm -hmm. more um, black support and financial aid needing and because a lot of us are poor, I'm poor. I can't get to conventions. I need help. <laughs> so financial help, strong patrons, and like you said, marketing and all of that. I think that's that's needed heavily in our black writing community. Okay. Um, so um, now we're finished with the panel. I want to thank you all. It was a beautiful panel. Um, people have enjoyed listening to you for an hour and six minutes, um, and they want to find out what you got in store. So the future of you is the question. What do you have in store um, in the future? Um, again, I'll go first. Um, of course, my, my, my book, uh, Harlem Street, um, Har Harlem, Horror Streets, I'm messing up the name, Jordan. Um, Horror Streets is, is um, um, coming out. But more importantly, it connects to two of my movies that I shot right before the uh, quarantine. I shot a movie called Cut Out, and that is a play on Jordan Peele's Get Out. And I shot a movie called Conjuring Baba. And uh, together with those two movies, I have prequels in my comic book. So people will see, and those are definitely down your alley, um, Newton, because I'm trying to you know, conjure some black stuff, bro. I'm in all black. Um, so yeah, that's what you see. And Jarvis, you'll appreciate it from a business standpoint, because um, Kai, I got sponsors. You know? I got people <laughs> paid two hundred dollars to be advertisers in my comic book, and the next comic book is going up to five hundred dollars because the brother needs to get paid. All right. <laughs> so, um, Kai, what you got? Jarvis, Newton, and then Shereen. I have a new release in romance oh, that yeah. just came out. Um, I'm still, as I always, working on my vampires. I'm trying to go and to figure out how to do script writing because I want everybody keeps asking for my sin eaters to be made into a series or something. Netflix, BET, somebody come get that. Be Tyler. No. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's what I got going on. This is my other fantasy that I would love for people to get. It's speculative, um, steampunk. And Ooh. all the magic and all the blackness, and it's Y N A oriented, and so there you go. That's all that's going on with me right now. <laughs> Jarvis, what you got? Um, oh man, um, <laughs> you know we got a bunch of things <laughs> going on. Uh, we just came out with the latest Genesis magazine. Uh, it's a magazine for independent creators to showcase their work. Um, uh, also, we are um, planning on the third year of the African American Author Fair here in the Nashville area once the quarantine um, lifts. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, we started back production on our 3D um, animated film, Earth Squad. So those are the three top things that we have going on on this end. All right. Um, New, what you got? Okay. Um I'm gonna go all out with this here. Not as well. Marie <laughs> so, is gonna follow you, so, she, so you know she got it. <laughs> but if you're not familiar with uh, Crescent City Monsters, I'm just gonna show you the books real quick. This is uh, issue one 
This is issue number two. And issue number three. <laughs> so right. we've been uh, <laughs> so right now um Gian, Carlo Brunel, the artist, and I are working on issue number four. Um everyone's kinda excited about that. Um so that's what I'm working on currently. I'm also like I mentioned before, is I'm working on a um a uh because this is an adult theme comic book, it's really more like uh it's really graphics, it's not made for kids. Um when I'm my cons I I feel bad when a kid comes over and doesn't have anything. So I decided to do a uh, sci-fi uh, preteen or uh, what is it? Um, YA story called Galaxy Cadets. I'm working on that. Um, I'm really excited. I want to really get that out because it's, um, oh, okay. You got my letter. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, um, I'm excited about that because that's, that's more of a fun thing. Um, Crescent City Monsters is a uh, super, natural noir feel to it so um just to be able to work on a story that's a little bit more fun um is uh is something that that's a great getaway so look out for galaxy cadets um that should be coming in, out in the next uh two to three months <laughs> there you go all right all, all right, right. Ooh, all right hey. okay I hold on drum roll <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for uh, a number of reasons. One, this is my newest book. It is Nine Bar Blues, Stories from an Ancient Future. It's a short fiction collection from Third Man Books. You can get the ebook anywhere right now. Um, the official the official book release is March 20, uh, excuse me, May 26th. But you can pre-order it right now on thirdmanbooks.com. And you can get it right away. You get it during the Corona um, shutdown. Um, <laughs> they were fortunate enough to get um, a few copies before um, the distributor wasn't able to ship them to the bookstore. So um, if you order from them, you will get them, get it right now. And I'm excited about this book because, I mean, people know me for Dark Matter, of course, which is wonderful. It was an honor to work on that. Um, um, and it's done, had a great impact on a lot of people's lives. I have done two multi-genre collections since then, Sleeping Under the Tree of Life and Shotgun Lullabies, both came from Aqueduct Press in Seattle. And those are hybrid because I'm a hybrid person. I write fiction and poetry. Um, so this is my first collection that's just all short stories. And I couldn't be happier. I love it. So, And it's going to be distributed if we ever make it out of this. <laughs> hey, Walmart is still distributing, so we'll see. Actually, like you can get it at a bookstore, they won't be like, "Oh, is it? Is it? Is it with Ingrams? Is it with consortium? Is it with you know? You know, you know how bookstores act, you know have a hard time sometimes ordering independent published books. So it's really I'm happy that they'll be able to get it. You can get it from your indie bookstore, your favorite in your neighborhood. You can get it online. So all right, I'm happy. <laughs> I, I want to say you know um, again. I've I've met everybody except Newton. It's my first time even exchanging with him. Um, no, I haven't met you yet, Kai either. Um, but and we were supposed to meet a couple of conventions. Um, but guys, you know, um, I'm not a stranger to any of you all, and I really appreciate y'all being on this panel. This is like my my core um, subject. So this is like I'm going to replay this forever. I'm, I'm trying to do, um, as you know, my little man, my little my little uh, figure is I love black sci-fi, right? So I'm trying to even do my own little documentary, you know, um, on, on sci-fi and black sci-fi. So I really thank you. I really enjoyed the conversation. Um, I, like I said, I'm going to pull this video down and then I'm going to put it up on YouTube and then you guys can share it. Um, homework assignment is to send me a link that represents your work so I can put it in the description. And uh, give me till tomorrow, because it's a little late and I've got to eat dinner. All right. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. you. It's been All right. really fun. Bye. Bye, guys. All right. <laughs> Take care now. Bye. <laughs>